Welcome to London and the indoor pit lane. Very, very cool. Now this is a race that we have been waiting for for a very long time. Formula E's return to London and it's come at a point in the championship where things are incredibly close. The stakes are incredibly high after New York City. This is going to be a very decisive weekend. The stage is almost set. The build is almost complete. Let's have a look what we've got to look forward to. Sam Bird and Jaguar win in New York City. So first up, there is no question that this is an absolutely massive weekend for Sam Bird. He comes into London top of the standings into a home race for himself and the team with his title chances very much back on the cards. New York City showed us Sam Bird at his very best. Bouncing back from the dreadful start to the weekend in spectacular fashion and leaving with another win in the Big Apple. Bird has been in this position or close to it in previous seasons and will be desperate not to let it slip and claim his first championship. But he and the team are in good company. Surrounded by the reigning champions Diaz de Cheetah, as well as Bird's old teammate Robin Fryens and his old team in Vision Virgin Racing. A championship fight, two home races off the back of a win. I'm not sure Sam Bird has ever been more up for a race weekend in his life. That same mix of performance and fortune that helped Bird top the standings, alongside the lack of points scored by many of the front runners going into the previous race, has also helped Acosta stay within grasp of defending his title, despite scoring zero points in one race short of half the season's races. So that climb from seventh to third in round 11 was huge for the reigning champ. There's only four races left of the season, so a strong performance here in London could be pivotal going into the final rounds in Berlin, a place where De Costa has very happy memories. Is that the, uh, is that the champion? <laughs> oh, I've lost four words, man. <laughs> it's not just Bird and Jaguar that will be calling this a home race, though. Many of the teams are based here, and seven of the 24 drivers on the grid race under the Union Jack. Sam Bird, Oliver Rowland, Jake Dennis, Alexander Sims, Alex Lynn, Oliver Turvey, and Tom Blomquist. A big weekend for all of them, regardless of championship position. Now, one of the favourites going into the season, especially after the first few rounds, were Mercedes EQ, a team who are rapidly running out of time to get their season back on track. Of course, things can change very, very quickly race by race in Formula E, but the team haven't scored more than eight points since their double podium in Valencia six races ago. I don't think it's unfair to say that Mercedes need London to go very well to still be in with a chance of even equaling the team's performance from last season. They're 33 points adrift in the team's championship, which is quite a lot of ground to make up, but could it start with a bounce back from Van Dorn and De Vries here in London? So in terms of race pace, the Audi powertrain, which is currently tucked away somewhere in this freight box, ready for a weekend of action, has been the one to beat. The powertrain is used by both Audi Sport App Schaeffler and the Envision Virgin Racing team. And at the start of the season, Audi are very confident, bragging about a powertrain that had 97% efficiency. And recently, during the races, we've been starting to see why they were so confident. Getting more efficiency out of the battery power, being able to push more during a race and needing to save less than others, even if that's just a fraction of a percent, can make a huge difference. Now let me help contextualize that. In New York City, the four cars running an Audi powertrain made up 36 positions between them, more combined than any other team. Even if the qualifying pace isn't there for all four drivers, the race pace and efficiency most certainly is. Envision Virgin Racing once again seemed to be getting more out of the hardware than the manufacturer team though. They outscored the rest of the teams by 13 points in New York, thanks to Nick Cassidy's second place finish in round 11 and the solid team points from both Cassidy and Robin Fryens finishing fourth and fifth in round 10. Now that puts them at the top of the team's championship and third and fourth in the drivers. So will the momentum of the team and success of highest scoring rookie Nick Cassidy continue and give them that top step winning feeling for the first time this season? Maximilian Gunther returned to form in impressive fashion in New York City. Winning round 10 and showing similar pace and energy management prowess in round 11, climbing up 13 places and into the points. 
Now, he does have the benefit of any potential track evolution here qualifying in Group 3. So he's in a great position to replicate his success in New York City if he can capitalize. A decent qualifying and a fourth and fifth in round 11 left Tag Heuer Porsche with their best points finish of the season and Pascal Verlein on the better side of the top 10. A pretty good position to maintain or even improve upon here in London ahead of the home double header and season finale in Berlin. This is a never been seen before layout. Racing over two levels, both inside and out, 22 turns over 2.25 kilometers. There are a whole host of unique characteristics about this track and hurdles that had to get jumped over to make sure this could be a functioning racing environment. The first of which being the surface of the inside section. Bend down with me, take a look. Right, as you can see, this is the normal convention floor. It's slippy, right? Imagine cars on this, they'd be slipping all over the place, it would be a nightmare. So what Formula E did very cleverly was have a, a different surface here, which is much more grippy and chemically bonded it on top of the original surface. So now the cars can race on here with the grip they need to get that energetic action pack racing that we're all used to. And the best part about that is, is once the races are over and we've left, it still works as a functioning convention center, but also means that next year when Formula E returns, the surface is good to go, ready for racing again. So then when you move outside, there are a number of challenges for the drivers to be contending with. First up, the change of surface. Now we talked about the prepared surface on the inside and how that's going to work, but then you come outside and you've got a more traditional asphalt and tarmac situation going on. But even then, there's quite severe surface changes. I mean, just look here, this goes completely from one type to another type, leading into a decline. Now at the moment, it's very dry, it's nice and sunny, but some rain is predicted on the weekend. So that could cause some major havoc. Surface changes can be difficult at the best of times. Add rain on top, you might have some more challenging. So then quickly following that exit from the inside over the surface change, you get this steep decline where they plummet down like a roller coaster. I really feel like I'm channeling my inner Dario here, right down here into the outside section of the track. And then on the other side, you've got an even steeper incline to come back into the indoor section. I tell you what, this track is gonna throw up some challenges and I for one cannot wait to see how the drivers deal with it and what it brings to the racing. Finally, there's a slight change to the format this weekend. Free practice one will be taking place on Friday afternoon local time, meaning that there'll only be one practice session on each of the race days. These races feel like they've been a long time coming because they have, you know, last year we missed out, but this weekend it's finally happening. And the closest title battle that we've seen in this championship's history can continue. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure I'm mentally prepared for this. This circuit here in London, inside and outside, the point we are in the championship, it's going to be amazing. And you can find out where to watch, where to get involved at fiaformulae.com forward slash watch.